I hate so much of what college football has become, and yet I love it anyway and keep coming back for more. Why is that and what the heck's wrong with me? Let's talk about that and more right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. On today's program, I want to talk about the possibility of a draft in college football, plus Luther Burden getting another reward and superlative here in the preseason. Before I start the show, I do have a deal for you, though. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And I want to start today's show with some bigger college football talk because we're getting down to it right now, of course. This is fall camp going to be wrapping up this week for the Tigers. Just a week and a half left until the Tigers kick off the 2024 season. So I have to say I've been thinking a lot lately about this goofy sport we call college football because notably, I was hanging out with my dad the other day and a man who attended the 1970 Orange Bowl, by the way, just to give you an idea of how long he's been a Missouri fan back in his student days. And, you know, in many ways, the 60s really did end that day, January 1st, 1970. Just a silly Simpsons reference for you there at the top. But seriously, though, folks... Why do I still keep coming back to this? Why is my dad, who just turned 76 years old, he seems to be more excited about Missouri football today than I would argue even than he was back in his college days. So how can this possibly be true, right? This ridiculous sport we call college football, especially in a world where the NFL, after it merged with the AFL, well, pro football ended up surpassing college football in popularity, and yet college football still remains a huge popular staple of this country, maybe the second most popular sport in the country. So why am I still coming back, even though so much of what has changed in college football the last decade or so, I, I actually genuinely hate? For example... Did anybody ask for 18 teams in the Big Ten? How about L.A. to New Jersey in the Big Ten? Was anybody asking for that? I mean, honestly, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. But, hey, TV money is all that matters at this point. So why am I still coming back to this silly sport in a world where I've got the Chiefs, I've got Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and multiple Super Bowl championships? Who needs this triple-A football, right? doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, first of all, I'm not really talking about me, per se, because obviously my father and I are addicts. We're, we're addicted. We're going to keep coming back until they lower us into the ground someday. I, I'm pretty darn sure of that. But in terms of making new fans and all that good stuff, I think you have to, you have to be asking yourself, if you're in charge of this sport at any level, if you're Greg Sankey, the SEC commissioner, I do think it's on him in a big way to be looking out for the future of this conference and of this sport, because if he doesn't, then who the heck is going to? I, I really have honestly no idea about that. So for all of the change that has come in recent years here, not only conference realignment, NIL, the portal, everything. I still care about Mizzou, and so do you. And here's why I think that is, quite honestly, because some of the stuff, for as much change as there hasn't been, well, a lot of the stuff about Missouri itself and the big programs that everybody cares about throughout the country, well, they haven't changed a whole lot. For instance, the fight song has been around for 100-plus years. The uniforms, yeah, they change all the time, but basically we wear black and gold, right? As long as we're still wearing black and gold, things are going to be okay. Marching Mizzou, the whole thing, all the pageantry, 
it all still gets me going. We're, we're rooting for laundry. It's very much a, an emotional experience, as Jerry Seinfeld humorously pointed out famously in one of his stand-up bits back in the day. Ultimately, the reason I really love Mizzou football is all of those things combined together make me feel like a kid again. Even at 41 years old, even my dad at 76 years old, I promise when we're walking through the gates at Faro Field here in a week and a half, we're going to feel like kids again. And a part of that, of course, this whole fan experience, there's a changing relationship over the years. I mentioned my dad. Well, he basically became a fan of Missouri when he started to go to college, more or less. Growing up in Kansas City, it's not like there were a lot of Missouri games on television in the 1950s and the 1960s. So it really wasn't until he became a college student that he became a Missouri fan. Whereas I have been a Missouri fan big time because of him since I was, say, five or six years old. That's that's as far back as I can remember anyway. And because of that, well, I had a different relationship with those players. I grew up looking up to, literally and figuratively, guys like Doug Smith, and Melvin Booker, and, and Javon Crudup, and, and, and guys like that. So then, of course, there's a transition. Then now when I go to Mizzou, now all of a sudden I'm rooting for guys who are my peers. And then by the time Mike Anderson came along, now I'm going, wait a second, I'm actually older than all of these guys, and yet I still feel like I'm as into it as I ever have been. And now I'm at a point where I'm old enough to be Brady Cook's dad. Like, that's that's literally true, by the way. Now, thankfully for everyone on earth, I did not have children when I was 20 years old. But that literally could have been true. So I'm just saying I genuinely do care about Brady Cook and Luther Burden and many, many others on this team, of course, as well. Even though I don't have an actual relationship with any of these guys, you sort of st- start to get to know who they are as human beings a little bit, and you just start to root for them, not only as NFL players potentially in the future, but just as human beings off the field as well. And I think that is an important part of our fandom and one that I'm glad that Missouri is loosening up the reins here a little bit in terms of media access and getting letting us get to know more players outside of the true freshmen. So back to my point about what I think Missouri fans really care about, all the tradition that is Missouri football. You start picking that stuff away, now you're really hurting the product. Fortunately, Missouri itself, I'm not accusing them of doing that, but I am accusing college football in general. And again, this is something I've been talking about for a while. I'm really worried the 12-team playoff is going to lessen the importance of the SEC championship game specifically. But of course, that's it from a Missouri fan's perspective. But as a fan of the sport in general, I don't want to see any of the college championships being lessened in terms of importance. And this is something that Gabe DeArmond mentioned in his 10 thoughts this morning over at Power Mizzou. Again, I've been talking about this all summer, but Gabe talked about, hey, what if teams start sitting guys out Say you're 12-0 and 0 and you're a guaranteed into the SEC championship game. Maybe it makes some sense to sit those guys going into the title game. Now, of course, you do get a bye if you get the championship. That's something to consider. But what doesn't seem to be considered is how important the actual SEC championship is. Being able to put up 2024 SEC champions onto the press box at Memorial Stadium would mean I can't even imagine how much that would personally mean to me as a fan. Now, if you're 21 years old and you don't really care about the tradition of college football, maybe you're like my dad and you're just getting into it because you're in college. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. I just think that your perspective may be a little bit skewed because of, hey, everything is just about the college football playoff, right? Well, I'm sorry. I just don't I just don't agree with that at all. I think winning an SEC title, had Missouri won a Big 12 title back in the day, that would have meant not as much as a national title, but I'd say 90% of the way there, something like that. For me, being in Atlanta, seeing the Tigers hold up SEC championship placards with the confetti raining down, I I just can't see how that can possibly be devalued because if you do devalue that that is an enormous mistake and it becomes ever more dangerous with the further expansion of the playoff we haven't even had a year of 12 team playoff yet and yet it seems like 
it's inevitable that it's going to expand to 16. So this problem is already going to get worse. Again, if this happens, something's gone terribly wrong. It's one thing to lessen the Liberty Bowl, for example, which you can certainly argue, argue that much of the bowl system is a relic at this point. But if conference championships don't matter, we truly have lost something that is akin to losing the black and gold or every true son and fight tiger. Also, it'd be yet another way that college football has become very much like the NFL. College football has always been different than the NFL. The more it gets similar, the more it looks like just a lesser form of college football instead of a different sport, which is something that we all fell in love with. And to the idea that we need to be more like the NFL, well, I've seen at least one listener out there thinks we should go even further and turn to a college draft. Well, what do I think about this concept? Well, let's talk about that here in just a little bit. But first, what about a FanDuel? Because you've heard me talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, I have something a little bit different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account, a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. By the way, the Tigers minus 47 and a half against Murray State here in week one. That's definitely a stay away for me, folks. In fact, if you made me bet, I would take the racers and the points there. I just That seems like an incredibly high amount of points. And Drinkwitz really not the type of guy to run up the score, unlike the Josh Heupel era of Missouri football. But regardless of what you think, you got to go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every moment more. College football is back this weekend, and Locked On College Football kicks off the action with a live season preview at 6 o'clock Central tomorrow on the Locked On College 24-7 streaming YouTube channel. This four-part series covers each of the four major conferences and with discussion on which ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, and SEC teams have a shot at the, expended, at the expanded college football playoffs. I'm on the second segment of the Locked On SEC preview, so be sure to check out this special streaming on Locked On College's 24-7 YouTube channel or on Amazon Fire TV, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And continuing my discussion about the big picture of college football, viewer Thomas Sharp writes in, he says, I'll be glad when it's the NFL system. You either make the playoff or the year's over. Install a salary cap, the whole nine. That's where it really is at now. Hell, honestly, just get the top 40 to 50 in one league and start a college draft as well. Seven to 10 round college draft, free agency, do it all right. Recruiting is bad for the athletes and coaches having to constantly work year round, get rid of it, have a draft. Now, I'd like to think that I'm the guy who comes up with radical suggestions here on the Locked On Podcast Network. But you know what? Thomas Sharp has definitely got me beat there. And implementing a draft in college football would be not only radical, I, I think it would quite clearly kill the sport once and for all. Now, I understand the instinct because you may be thinking, well, if the draft works in the NFL, the NFL is the most popular sport that there is, so why wouldn't it work for college? Well, number one, who are you drafting in the NFL? You're drafting a bunch of guys that are going to be paid at minimum a half a million dollars or something like that. And for guys who are picked in the first round, well, it's millions of dollars per year. So it's one thing to ask somebody, hey, if you're going to enter this line of business, we'll pay you five million bucks a year. But guess what? We're going to tell you where you have to live. It's going to be in one of these 32 major cities, don't get me wrong, but 
this is one of those places you're going to have to live. And you may have a big preference, and most of us would have a big preference on whether you'd live in, say, Seattle or Kansas City or Miami or New York or anywhere in between. Of course, in the perfect world, we'd all like to choose where we're actually going to live the next few years of our lives. But hey, for a few million bucks, I'd probably let the NFL decide where I started off my career as well. But in terms of college football, what are we talking about here? We're talking about high school kids. We're talking about kids who have maybe lived nowhere else in their lives but their hometown. So we're now going to what? Force a guy from Los Angeles, California to go live in, in Maryland or something like that. Even though in his world, hey, his, he's dreamed of playing for USC growing up. But instead of letting him freely sign there, we're going to force him to, again, go across the country and play for the Maryland Terrapins or something like that. How does that make any sense whatsoever? Sure, if you're Maryland, you might like it because your level of talent is probably going to be a little bit better. I'll grant you that. But at the same time, if, again, you say free agency, well, what does free agency look like? We already have that. If you're going to have a draft, then if we're going to have free agency, what does that exactly look like? So you get a draft your freshman year, but then your sophomore year, you're free? Or is it after your junior year? Or I'm just saying I don't think we've necessarily thought the college draft idea all the way through. But the reality is, again, you can't force a bunch of guys to go to college somewhere that they don't want to. And, and before you start talking about NIL, well, yes, some of these guys, the upper echelon players, are in some cases getting hundreds of thousands, if not a couple million bucks a year, whatever it is to attend a college for all intents and purposes. Fine. But the lion's share of those players aren't getting that opportunity. They're just basically still college students. They might be getting a few thousand bucks here or there that they may not have in the past, but that doesn't justify in any way saying, okay, you have to move across the country or move somewhere you have no interest in going to school. I, I mean, to me, the draft for college is just a non-starter for about a million different reasons. And to this idea, by the way, that the NFL is successful because of parity, I don't really believe that because, frankly, there's more parity in Major League Baseball in terms of actual champions. Who's won, who, There's been more World Series winners of the past 10 to 20 years than there certainly have been NFL winners. Heck, the Kansas City Royals, after winning, what, about 50 games last year, something like that, are in a pretty good spot for the wild card this year. So, hey, parity reigns supreme in Major League Baseball right now, and yet their attendance – their ratings seem to be dipping with each and every season, which makes me sad as a baseball fan. But I'm just telling you this, every year in the NFL, it's the guys who have the quarterbacks who are the, the real contenders. If you have Patrick Mahomes, if you have you know Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady in the past, Ben Roethlisberger, whoever it might be, now it's C.J. Stroud probably, Joe Burrow, those type of guys – those are the ones who you can expect to win. Everybody else, they're just playing. Let's be real. This idea that there's parity in the NFL, well, yeah, if you can get one of the superstar quarterbacks, you can then raise up. Good luck finding one, though. And coming up, another honor for Luther Burden III and some support for my take that Burden is going to be one of the finalists for the Heisman Trophy this season. Coming up here in a minute, First, though, let's talk eBay Motors, where passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. 
And congratulations out to Luther Burden III, who was just named as a preseason first-team All-American by the Associated Press. I'd almost be surprised at this point if Luther didn't get that honor at the end of the season as well. And you know what? Part of my part of my bold predictions this past offseason was that Luther Burden would make would be one of the finalists for the Heisman this coming season. Not predicting a win for Burden, number one, more often than not. History, of course, tells us that it's really, really hard for a wide receiver to win that award, in particular in, in recent years. It's almost always a quarterback as well. But you know what? When the Athletic did a Heisman Trophy draft recently with some of its writers. Well, actually, Burden went third overall after quarterbacks Carson Beck of Georgia and Dylan Gabriel of Oregon. So that does kind of buoy my point that Burden has better Heisman odds, I think, than is really being reflected out there, including by my friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. To me, Luther Burden at 65-1, to 1, despite the fact that it's going to be an uphill battle for any receiver to win the trophy, to me, 65-1 to 1 is a pretty doggone good value. That's just my humble opinion, especially when you compare it to his teammate Brady Cook, who, again, despite quarterbacks being generally the winner of this award, so I can see the argument for Cook, Still, though, at Cook being 30 to 1, again, Burden 65 to 1 being compared to Cook, less than half those odds. That, that's crazy. More than half those odds, whichever way I'm supposed to say that. That's, that's to me way too much of a gap there. So to me, Burden really does remain the value there. Again, look at Avery Johnson, the quarterback of Kansas State. He's hardly started very much, certainly not an entire season, but for him to have even slightly better odds than Brady Cook. Again, that just tells you, I think, Burden at 65 to 1. If you want to get a little bold, put 10 bucks on it to win 650. That doesn't seem like the worst thing or the, the least fun thing to follow if you're a Missouri fan to me. And by the way, Seth Emerson, who in, in the draft, if you want to call it that, the hypothetical draft here, Burden went third overall. Well, later on, about 30 picks later, Brady Cook was selected by Emerson as well. He says, quote, now I'll double down on Missouri's offense. Cook may be the most underrated quarterback in the SEC. He threw for the fourth most passing yards last season behind Beck, Daniels, and Dart. And this year, he still has Burden and Theo Weiss. Missouri's schedule is fortuitous enough to see the Tigers going 11-1 and one and Cook getting the credit. So I agree with the logic there, for sure. And again, to my point, though, I, I, I could see all the logic for Cook, but again, Cook selected several spots rounds later than Burden in this hypothetical exercise here. Again, I'm just a little bit surprised that FanDuel, who is usually all over the odds on this kind of stuff. But the thing is with the Heisman, it's not as much an advanced statistical type of calculation. So I think there may be something being a bit missed here by FanDuel. The human element, how media hype and how human beings actually vote and and you know consume this type of content that ends up ends up manifesting itself in a Heisman vote. In other words, while FanDuel is really good at say, hey, we're gonna put down a point spread based on all these different statistical factors of why this team is going to beat that team by 17 points or whatever it is, that type of calculation just doesn't really exist for the Heisman Trophy. You can look at history and say, hey, it's more quarterbacks than receivers and change the odds accordingly there. I just think you got to dig a little bit deeper, think a few steps further down the road, and I think you'll start to realize that, oh, wait, Actually, Luther Burden III is a, quite a bit more of a contender for this than his odds are reflecting. That's just my humble opinion. If you think I'm wrong, <laughs> then you don't have to take any action whatsoever. Hey, you know what? With all that being said, let's wrap it up here on Locked on Mizzou. Not going to lie, I had a rough start where I knocked the light that usually illuminates my background here off of the shelf. It broke. Then I touched the lamp and electrocuted myself. So a bit of a tough start here if this hasn't been my best episode. Maybe because my brain is slightly fried. Hopefully, I will get the 
I will get all my uh, synapses firing correctly here by the next episode. So until next time, I am John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.